Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast. The conversation now is about the sacking of the service chiefs. President Muhammad Buhari has appointed new service chiefs, and they are Chief of Defense Staff Major General Loki E. O. Irabo, Chief of Army Staff Major General I. Atahiru, Chief of Naval Staff Rear Admiral A. Z. Gambo, and Chief of Air Staff Air Vice Marshal I. O. Amao. He's already accepted the immediate resignation of the old service chiefs, including Chief of Defense Staff General Abayomi Olonishake, former Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tuko Burotai, former Chief of Naval Staff Vice Admiral Ibok Ibas, and Chief of Air Staff Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar. Recall that there's been calls for the federal government to sack the service chiefs over the worsening insecurity in the country. And uh, joining us now to discuss this is a security expert, uh, Mr. Tony Ufoyeto. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning. How are you? Susan? I'm fine. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank now, you. so many stakeholders were calling for the resignation of these service chiefs and for the president to appoint new ones, seeing how, you know, insecurity has worsened and, you know, their retirement age. Now the president has done this. So would you say kudos to him for that? Well, um, I, I think the main thing is that uh, he has made it. Uh, it's long since that do. I think long since that do. I would only say with the president of the country to be uh, expectations of Nigeria as as men do. But the good thing is that uh, uh, he has done it. And I think that the president will want to appreciate him for um, doing that. Uh, if he didn't do it, there's nothing we can do. Uh, but at least let's let us give you to go for free, even though it's long for that group. Um, but I think this is kind of my own lesson to get something with um, the TV channel. Uh, but people that are done. And also the people that are there, and uh, so the best of my own knowledge as a security professional are still doing. Uh, so, uh, there are people that have put their feet in the, uh, in the profession. Uh, these are people who also expect to bring in new ideas, new strategy, new approach, new vigor. And uh, they give you the whole security apparatus that is at their disposal. Uh, I know very well that some of them are. Even in even international scene, um, like, like the team of uh, Naval Staff, for example, there, and I mean, I think you will see that it's an underwater warfare specialist that has been trained in and out of the country. Um, as I know, also was a long time partner for me. Um, I think it was a lot of people who We only had to choose the former uh, chief of the army staff, basically because he was giving forty days to the new uh, chateau. And I think, you know, once some of these things come from board like that, we only have to choose like that. But how did have this thing too? I, I think I'm not I'm impressed uh, with the personnel that I've been appointed to handle the mantle of leadership in the security apparatus. I would also expect that Mr. President will develop a political will to help them. Because the change of the service team is not a one of solution. It's just one of the negative solutions when it comes to combating terrorism. As for the way that the service to the former service team is changed because we felt that we are starting to defeat and the militia return was beginning to step in, and uh, we felt that we could bring in new people, we bring in new strategies. Knowing very well that the former families, they are situations where when they are put already by the terrorists, they know they can predict them, they know what they want to do to do this. And that has happened to them by the two. They had a feeling of ambushment and the like. And right. Hold on, Mr. Foyer. We identified the weaknesses, why the freedom. And um, the service chief, two things are key to the expectation of the average Nigerian. I expect that the current service chief will be at those 
look at identify those vulnerabilities. Do a proper risk analysis. And they find it will not become the approach to the future and the security of the um, okay. All right. Mr. Abuja, kindly hold on. Uh, kindly hold on. We're also having a little struggle getting uh, full clarity uh, from your end. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to pull through with this conversation and, and get everything that you're saying. Uh, but I, I want us to slow down a little bit. Let's go back to uh, one of the details that has been a little confusing for many Nigerians, and that is the um, perspective where it is said that they resigned. The president, you know, in his statement on social media said he has accepted the resignation of the service chief. So I want you to quickly speak on that. Um, some clarity into... Can you come again, please? I'm asking about the perspective of the, uh, the uh, service chiefs who reportedly resigned. Um, I want you, you to help us clarify that. Did they resign or were they sacked? And, and, and how important is it, you know, for either of these two uh, uh, narratives? Well, um, for me, I say that whether they resigned or they were sacked is inconsequential. Uh, as far as I am concerned, I'm not even interested in just writing. The main thing is that Mr. President has asked the need of their uh, office, so to speak, and uh, whether... Whether they were sad, whether they resigned and all this stuff, the main thing is they start to meditate of it. And so far, to the best of my own knowledge, there is nothing to change them for now, for now. You know, so uh, they have done their best, they have done. It's not easy to find work. So and I give them that standing. I give them that standing. Their own life has been in their life. For about five years now, having attained that a manual of leadership. That is without prejudice to the years they are still in service. Some of them are still in office 37 years and the like. So I think the least we can do as a general is to salute them. It's to salute them, not to say whether they were staff or whether they resign from the last. They are just for all their knowledge. So I thought that was a new chapter in all this. All right, Mr. Oyefuto, you did mention that uh, you were impressed with the new service chiefs. And uh, even though the president has been, you know, alluded to being uh, slow to hire and fire uh, political appointees, the good thing is he has appointed these people now. But another cause for worry amongst, you know, several quarters is the ethnicity of these new service chiefs. You know, they, they, they claim or they, you know, bring out the, the federal character principle and say that these appointments do not reflect the diversity of Nigeria. No one from the Southeast was appointed. Would you say this really is an issue at this time? Well, um, so also looking at the spread of the for don't forget that we have four other chiefs, um, which definitely means that they cannot meet all political goals. But you will see that what they have to two from the south, two from the north. Two from the south, two from the north, or something like that. I, I don't think that should be an issue as to see now. There is always the one is that issue of uh, no, it's not enough and all those stuff like that. But when I, I am also, I, I believe so much in balancing it in terms of efficiency. But from what I've seen in this appointment, I don't have problem with the issue of balancing it. You have two mothers and you have two brothers, and, and I think that is what you to me. All right. Okay. Uh, you, you mentioned earlier that, you know, the, the, the service chiefs, what they had to do, that they are bringing in fresh ideas. But earlier on the program, on the breakfast, we had guests who talked about the, the fact that the issue in Nigeria and our security is systemic and that the security architecture of the country is compromised, that there's basically a low morale among staff members and that bringing in new service chiefs wouldn't exactly change the situation. Do you agree with that? So, do you feel that this move, bringing in new service chiefs, would do something, you know, to uh, change Nigeria and the way we're headed regarding security? Well, uh, from antiquity, if you look at um, when service chiefs are changed, you will observe that the first six months, um, and what I look at the first six months, the process will be solved in the first six months. 
Uh, why? Because their own approach comes in, uh, their own new strategy comes in and the like. I, I, I did mention that it is not a one off solution, and it is a problem that has even that preceded the starting stage. And for having said so, the job is basically on the table of Mr. President. Mr. President is ready to support their daily policies. But if Mr. President plays politics with them, it will be the same result. You know, and that is what we are talking about. It is not enough to say we are saying the same thing. It is good. It is 1,000 percent good. It's exciting. I'm so happy about it. And but you need to give them the finance they need. You need to give them the logistics they need. You need to give the operation the work that they need. You need to encourage the intelligence that is needed. You need to remove policies from their activities. You need to make them to become as professional as they want to be and as independent as they want to be. Politics to the region and identity to be removed from their activities. There will be zero interference with security operations. Now, we follow this, they will succeed. But if their decisions and their recommendations come to the table of Mr. President, and Mr. President is looking at it from ethnicity, or is looking at it from religious perspective, or is saying that there is no enough force, and the terrorists are having no problem, they will not perform my teaching. Okay, and we have to be very objective about that. Mr. They are coming and I'm sure that they are determined to make sure that we are clear and happy. But Mr. President is the person that says the final decision. So it's below on me to ensure that he gives them every support that they need. I'm not talking of the Sajaka support. I'm not talking of media support. I'm talking of actual support. Mr. Foyetong. Um, yes, in the past, we've had these conversations about changing the service chiefs is not the answer. And some of the things that you've mentioned, you know, we, if we continue to lack them and lack the political will, then nothing really would change. The things that you are talking about now that the president needs to ensure that he provides for these new service chiefs, um, I don't know if you would agree that they weren't made available for the previous service chiefs. And so why do you think it will be different now? Well, I, I think um, I, I may not be able to answer for Mr. President some of these things. But, you know, at times when we talk like this, we give, a, we give advice so that those that are the head of success will also be able to advise Mr. President rightly. At times, it's not even being the president, it may just be those that are his advisors, his lieutenants, that are not giving him the right advice, that are not telling him what to do rightly. You don't expect him to monitor all radio, all TV programs, and the like. So at times, it could also be himself. So it's a double thing. But having said this, um, I, I will only plead that if we do the same thing, in the same manner always, we can only get the same result. If Mr. President wants to get a different result, all we are starting to do is change his approach. This is this political way. This is this trying to ensure that these people succeed. And even they themselves, apart from Mr. President now, the new service chief expect that they will look inward. There are some of the generals that have been indicted as the finger charter commander, you know, as war commanders and the like have been finger that they were not paying the soldiers to have welfare. If the if, 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 if Ministry of Defense has released 10,000 naira per day, they will be giving them 1,000 naira per day and they, will not, they are not allowed to talk. These are issues that the current services to look at. Now there are more, there are intelligent, even Blaza has said it several, there are more inside the army to make the effort. The new service is to be able to put in intelligent machinery to motor, to fish out those more that give information to the terrorists, to the extent that it's easy to ambush uh, soldiers in the course of their going for operation. It's easy to come and give and to attack hard targets. Now, when these services also do all this, it will also make a big wall of difference. 
apart from the fact that they also look at the international communities, the international NGOs that are the theater work front, in the name of Polio, in the name of Vaccine, in the name of HIV, in the name of Red Cross, Blue Cross, whatever it is. And they are giving information either to press groups and all those stuff like that. Let them also look at all this. And look at those that are impacted in what we call self defense in the military. Let them put in higher intelligence to be able to pick those ones out. It's not Mr. President that will do all this. Wow, you have mentioned a lot of key points there, talking about moles in the Nigerian military, welfare for staff, and how aid agencies might be aiding this, this war. But how about security intelligence, using the local people, people on ground, to make sure that you, know, you, you, you get eyes and ears so, to know what next to do? How about that? How about we beef up our uh, intelligence? Uh, well, you see... Intelligence is like a midfielder in security. Uh, you miss this, you have missed everything. Intelligence is the art. Intelligence is actually the, the what you call the grown name of good operational strategy policy. But the for example, the case of NASA, it's not just only an intelligence in underwater water, he is also of the intelligence community. You know, he was one time he was in the intelligence. He actually, everything about him about him being on the water specialist is that he's an intelligence specialist. We expect that he will be able to identify those that are sponsoring the terrorists through intelligence. They will be able to look at the financing of the terrorists, the finance channels, not just sponsors, the finance channels of the terrorists. They should be able to identify the places through intelligence of training and recruitment, the models of rapid training and recruitment of the terrorists. They should be able to, through intelligence, identify those that are in government, out of government, that are giving information, are in and out of government, through intelligence. And those things are very important for them to succeed. That means that they will need a lot of funds too. So if you ask me, from everything I know about intelligence, I know that they will need a lot of funds to be able to execute intelligence. But I also think that they should be able to work symbolically with other security agencies, like the state, the NSCDC, the Customs Immigration. Now, it's a holistic approach when it comes to this national security. I'm not in doubt as to their competence. I am only afraid if we surprise them, we give them the required 100% support. But I expect it for him. All right. Tony, for your time, thank you so much uh, for you. your thoughts and uh, for spending time with us this morning. We, of course, wish all these new service chiefs uh, the best, and we hope that we can actually see results um, in uh, the shortest possible time. Thanks once again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Have a wonderful day. You too. Absolutely. Listening to Mr. Uh, oh, if we talk, talk about this, we, I mean, we got lots of ideas about how to boost our counterinsurgency fight. It then goes on to show that it seems we all know what we're supposed to do. Because when you when we bring experts here to analyze key issues in politics, security, and the rest, we all have the answers. So it seems. So why are we into then implementing these things? So Since, we, you know. So you know when when you say we you know invite experts, we yes we invite security experts. You know, but I don't know if we can compare them with. Um, someone you know as high as a lieutenant general, you know, who really has war experience or who has and actually knows um, what to are, do exactly, you know. And um, at the same time, um, I I would like to believe that uh, the service chiefs themselves have spent time, you know, on you know in, in front of battle. They understand the peculiarities of what you know it really is like over there. Um, but you also do have a point with the fact that I'm sure that the presidency has advisors around him who understand what is needed and what is necessary and what level of support uh, that these new service chiefs um, require. I'm sure that the presidency also knows that without the necessary details you know, that, would, that must come into place to support these service chiefs, then we're, we basically may as well have put any um, gate man you know, in that position. We may have put a banker you know, as chief of army staff. We may have put a, as well put a doctor as chief of naval staff and expect you know, a magic. Um, it's not going to happen. 
what, what I'm really concerned about is if we would agree that that level of support, the, the corruption you know, that also exists in the military and, in, and in, in our security agencies, the lack of political will, the lack of support financially, the lack of support with intelligence, the lack of support with um, other security um, 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 agencies in the country, um, if those things are not there from the presidency to these people, and they haven't been there until these ones were sacked, why, why would they be there now? Why, why would the new service chiefs now suddenly make the presidency decide that maybe we should support this one's different? Um, I don't know. And I don't see that that would change. Yes. Um, I don't see, if, if we've always, for the longest time, been talking about, oh, these guys need to go. They don't seem to be working. And at the same, in the same breath, been saying the presidency needs to have show more political will, needs to step in more and support these guys who are in these positions. And nothing changed all that way. I don't see why it would change now. Yeah. It um, seems then that the bulk stops on the president's desk. And, it always um, will. He's the commander in chief of the armed forces. Yes. So we just hope that uh, for, this, for this new service chiefs, they get all the support they need. So we can, you know, when the presidency eventually comes up to say that we have defeated Boko Haram, every Nigerian can know in their hearts that that is true. That's uh, what we'll, we'll call it a wrap here on this segment on talking about the service chiefs and the replacement. We'll now be talking about the Monetary Policy Committee uh, meeting and what they've decided after this break with our guest who's on standby. Do stay with us.